This story starts with the discovery of Uranus. He was not the first one, but on the 13th of March 1781, William Herschel observed a fuzzy object in the constellation Taurus. Such a nice example of what's today called backyard science. With a homemade reflector, he observed it on several nights from his backyard and measured the parallax to the distant stars. At first glance he mistook it for a comet. He noted in his journal, I looked for the comet or nebulous star and found that it is a comet, for it has changed its place. After he published his observation of the comet, many astronomers also made observations. And it was German astronomer Johann Bode who pointed out that the orbit of the object was very circular, which was confirmed by calculations from Anders Johann Lexell. A strong indication for a planet, not a comet. Others shared that opinion as well and continued observations and calculations. Two years later this new planet was officially accepted and Herschel was declared as the discoverer of that new planet. By the observation of the most eminent astronomers in Europe, it appears that the new star, which I had the honor of pointing out to them in March 1781, is a primary planet of our solar system. And he was awarded with an annual payment from King George III. With this discovery, mankind now counted seven planets. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. Kids in schools learned about the seven planets and memorized new sayings and the world was fine and dandy. Until in around 1820, a crisis of planetary scale emerged. This new planet did not behave as calculations expected. Realizing that Herschel was not the first person to observe this object, astronomers and mathematicians went through old observational data to establish a clear definition of an orbit. Comparing this data with older observations, a deviation from the predicted path was uncovered. Imagine shooting a ball out of a cannon and placing the target right where Newtonian physics tells you it should be. But instead the ball hits Canada. Uranus was deviating from its proposed orbit and no one knew why. If you develop a theory of how a certain thing in your life works, and your observations show that your theory is not correct, will you be angry or happy? In our everyday world we are pleased if things turn out the way we expect them to. Let's say you have a theory that there are only white swans in the world. You start by going to lakes and rivers and you see many white swans. Your theory is pretty good, maybe? But can you ever be 100% sure that there are only white swans in the world? No matter how many white swans you have seen, 10, 100, 1 million, only one black swan will crush your theory. You can now descend into despair, for your theory failed. Or you could feel happy, because you now have an even better theory. Scientists always want to find evidence that a certain thing is not behaving as predicted. We can only improve our understanding of the universe if it's proven to be wrong. Eventually a French mathematician started to backtrack the problem and I'm sorry if I know a bunch of French names. Urbain Le Verrier, with a very complicated set of calculations, realized that this gravitational anomaly could be explained with a large body of mass outside the orbit of Uranus. Retracing the path to the current time without the help of modern computers, he predicted this strange object to be somewhere in the constellation Aquarius. Since even Uranus is almost invisible to the unaided eye, the search for this new object could have taken months if not years. Searching the dark night sky with self-made telescopes, keeping record of failures, despair and frustration is not what happened. You have to give Le Verrier credit, he knew how to math. Following the predictions, astronomers found Neptune in one night. They knew exactly where to look. Imagine that. The new discovery was a huge success for science and surely united all astronomers in the world. No, 
There was a heated discussion about who deserved the credit for this discovery, especially between France and Great Britain. Proposed names were, among many, Leverrier's planet, Janus and Herschel. Eventually, the public settled on Neptune. Thanks to the work of so many astronomers, mathematicians and so many others, our knowledge of the solar system has hugely expanded over the last decades and centuries. When I first had the idea of making this video, I also wanted to image these planets, photographing them with my telescopes and cameras. But sadly, the Sun has different plans. With our technology and hand, developed on the foundation of Herschel and so many others, nowadays observing planets and photographing them is no problem anymore. But for me right now, the Sun says otherwise. I hope you enjoyed this small detour of astronomy in the past. I will try to make some more of these videos in between astrophotography content, if I have the time. And I already have another very interesting topic in the back of my head. If I manage to make this video at some point, many of you will call me an idiot and many of you will agree with me, because I want to talk about the next thing misidentified behind Neptune, Pluto.